spus tu, dragă trăguță, Mi-ai cerut ciora cu panglicuță, Și-ai mai vrea, și-ai mai vrea, și-ai mai vrea matale, Să-ți cumpere neica și sandale. As mentioned before, Irene Good Obdike was the uh, majordomo or the caregiver, the caretaker of the estate of the Nazi uh, engineer. He was not a Nazi, he was a German who had no choice but to work for the German armament in his name. And often he had in his home the Gestapo, the SS, the Wehrmacht, the German army uh, officials coming uh, for dinner or for a banquet or party. And at one of those dinners, Irene Good Opdyke heard that the SS guy had said, next week we're going to take all the Jews from the uh, ghetto, little ghetto, the workforce of the ammunition industry, and ship them to the death camps, and we're going to bring in new labor force. This was happening in a small city, city village in Poland. Exactly. Okay. And, and Irene heard that, and she had friends in, among the Jewish families uh, in the ghetto. And those friends were uh, people that, when she worked before, she became the caretaker for the for the engineer. Uh, she worked there in the laundry, I believe, of that uh, particular camp, and she knew four families, which were very close to her, and which she didn't see that now because she was not no longer in a ghetto, but she knew where they were and who they were. That night she passed the word to the four families and told them that soon you're going to be shipped, shipped to your death, to your extermination, and I want to hide you in the villa where I'm working and there's a basement and the major never, never goes, uh, it, it was a major, but Again, he was not actually... He was actually a civil engineer. Civil engineer. But he had a, a, a yeah, military title, title as a... Yeah. Something. The major never goes to the basement. And you could be there forever and ever. I will feed you. And during the day when he's away, you will come out and, you know, uh, be in the house. And in the evening or late afternoon, you will go downstairs and hide for the night. So these are four families, and each family must have had at least three, four... Uh, yeah, there were a total, total of 12, 12 uh, people, plus one of the ladies was pregnant. Mm -hmm. So actually there were 30 people, so there were eight yeah. parents, Yeah. eight parents, because it's yeah. four families, and yeah. four children, and yeah. one unborn. One unborn, yet. yes. This is exactly what Irene did. She brought them down to the basement uh, during some break or whatever it is, when nobody was around, hid them, and this went on for very long time. This went uh, for almost a year uh, of, of, of the, the last year of the war, basically. When did this happen? You mentioned the date. I would say uh, 43 to uh, early 44. So basically this routine went for about 365 days at yeah. uh, during the day they would come out just to wash to be able to yes. see the light and at night or and afternoon. And also hel help her clean the villa and all that and all that. Right. And as soon the afternoon came they will go downstairs, they will be quiet. Right. I, uh, and uh, especially, but this was a major, children. major project uh, major to, to project. take care of 13 uh, and people. Of course she risked her own life. Right. And that's the reason she was pronounced a righteous Gentile, right? Or a, a goy, uh, uh, goy kadosh, as we say in the Bible, uh, a stranger, non-Jew who is righteous. Mm -hmm. How did you learn about this story? Did well, you, how did you meet uh, her? As I 
also uh, mentioned briefly, but I would like to elaborate on this. Uh, there was a newspaper in Fullerton by the name of the Fullerton News Tribune. The Fullerton what? Fullerton uh, News Tribune. Ah, the Fullerton News, News Tribune. Tribune. Okay, and? Which was a daily paper. Right. Now the paper is now a weekly. Right. But at that time it was daily. And I that time we're going when? We're going to 76. Okay, so you read a story in the 70s. And I'm reading in the paper that yesterday uh, Mrs. Irene Budokdijk, the wife of the president of the uh, Rotary or Kiwanis or Club in, one of in the Fullerton. civil clubs, no, in your Belinda, in your Belinda, yes, was scheduled as a substitute speaker because the speaker did not show up or was had called in the last moment to say that he's not going to make it. Right. So the the husband, Miss Mr. Obdyk, and I have a little story about him too, about the generosity of the Jewish people toward not only the righteous Gentile, but also to the family of the righteous Gentile and Mr. Obdyk. And he plugged in his wife to tell the story of her life during the Second World War in Poland. And of course she related the story of how she hid, sheltered, protected 12 Jewish people plus a baby to be born. So they were never found and they survived, the war ended and they were able to go out of hiding from the house and move on. Yeah, but it's more interesting than that. And I'll tell you what it was. Two people had tried to escape the ghetto or had tried to do... Uh, I'm talking about the new, the new uh, people of the ghetto because the old people, after Irene protected the, the, the 12 people, yep. Uh, those people were shipped to the extermination camps and a new labor arrived. Wait, wait a minute, so those people were caught? The 12 people were caught? No. No. Two men tried, who were brought in to work at the, at the ammunition Mansion. factory, at the ammunition factory of the village, uh, escaped and they were caught. Mm -hmm. And the punishment for escaping and unfortunately was hanging, public hanging. Right. And one day after that episode, uh, the whole Jewish ghetto, all the Polish peasants were gathered, were, were gathered in. at the town square to watch. To watch, to witness the public hanging of two people who were obviously as a tactic to uh, dissuade and to scare, scare anyone else not to hide Jews and not to uh, let anybody escape right well Irene was forced uh, like everybody else to be at the town square for the public hanging right and when she finished uh, when the, the 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 hanging was over and everybody was dispersed with the two poor uh, Jews hanging by their neck, right. she went to the back to the mansion, right. and she forgot to lock the front door mm -hmm. when she came in. And that day, the major who also was present at the, the hanging, hanging came home during came the day. home earlier than than expected because he didn't want to go back to work. Right. Uh, he, he was really not a fascist. Right. He was not a Nazi. He was a good person, and the best proof for his goodness is the fact that he walked in, and he saw twelve people in the house, rather than as always in the basement, right. hidden. And he looked at Irene and says, "Irene, what have you done to me?" Right. We're going to be executed. Executed. So, yeah. And Irene said, 
I'm sorry and uh, the apparently the price for her negligence was she had become the mistress of the major wow. and survived the war all the way to the end in this mansion and of course the Germans had to withdraw to right. uh, leave Poland to go back to Germany right, the Russians hoping, and all hoping that, that the, the Russians will not catch them right. and they were hoping that they will be arrested by the American or the British or the French forces right. rather than by the uh, Russian forces. Right. So Irene Gudovdijk became the mistress of the major for the rest of the uh, war and uh, the, the major was kind enough to really go down, play with the children wow. like they were his own grandchildren. So the baby must have been born if they were there yeah. a year. That the baby, baby, the baby was, was born. Was born. Wow. And of course, uh, nobody knew about it. Extraordinary. Nobody uh, ever... Uh, so do we, know, do we know the name of this general? Is it known <laughs> who he was and all that? Yes, I have it. Uh, the, the major was... It's in my memoir, so right. I'll have to look at it. So uh, uh, go forward now to 1976, the Rotary no, meeting. No, no, wait a minute. Uh, when the war was over, Irene uh, departed from the from the, the the village from the twelve Jews or thirteen Jews, right? And they wrote her a letter in Yiddish to tell everybody that she was a righteous Gentile, that she was not a Nazi, right? That she was not uh, to be accused of anything, right? And she went back to. Uh, nursing school because she started uh, so she was young herself she was young she was, she was 20 when this happened so by now she was probably 22 right and she related that story to the to the club that she spoke to and I became very curious uh, how come there's in my territory which is Fullerton, Brea, Yerba Linda this is Orange County is, uh, North, North Orange County next to Los Angeles right that there is a righteous woman like Irene that I don't know about her I called her up I made a lunch date took her out for lunch and we talked she had a business of draperies right and curtains and all that um, and lo and behold I heard the story and it sounded authentic to me and I'm pretty uh, critical about stuff like that because a lot of people tell you, yes, I saved Jews and you find out that uh, he did nothing but he's... Make up a story. Make up, making up stories. But you verified it with yeah. the, the no. survivors and all that. Well, that was the problem. I wrote to Yad Vashem, which is the Holocaust Authority in Israel, in Jerusalem, Shai mai vrem, shai mai vrea trecuță ană Ca să te îmbrac mai cona framă Să-ți cumpăr, să-ți cumpăr cercei mai ană Dar eu n-am de unde mai coadară Auzi, dragă fata, nechi dragă Aseară colivă ta viceană Și acum nu sparale, să-ți cumpăr sandale Buzunarele sunt doale bani Mai a fui trecuță Încă o băncuță Și băui în colitru 